So Molly came in, and Molly was very weak, and uh, her heart was beating very, very fast. And when I looked at her gums, uh, they were a little bit more pale than normal. Uh, so her, her, um, her blood count was very low. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Get an idea what pink gums look like. So if your dog ever had pale gums or your cat, it'd be nice to know. So take a look at a variety of dogs and cats under different lights and get a feeling what normal gums look like. If they're pigmented black, they're going to look different because the pink doesn't show up as much. And sometimes some animals just have paler gums than other dogs and cats. Have paler gums than other dogs and cats. So just take a look and see what you see. Um, and remember what the pink means is that there's blood cells that are delivering oxygen to the gums and that's what gives the gums that pink color and the oxygen are carried by the red blood cells that are little discs and as long as your dog or cat has enough of these discs going through its veins it can get enough oxygen and the common causes of blood loss or, and, or anemia and lack of blood cells can be um, rat poison so always check to make sure you don't have any rat poison around uh, bleeding of course ticks can transmit bacteria that can cause that can blow up the red blood cells and cause problems and your your dog or cat can actually react against its own blood cells to cause an immune uh, destruction of its own blood cells and that will cause an anemia animals that have paler mucous membranes or gums look like these. They're not as pink and as you can see on the cytology or the blood smear in the upper left hand corner there's less cells and there can be dots in there that even show that are bacteria in there that are blowing up the red blood cells and causing a problem. And again remember these can be caused by rat poison, by bleeding, uh, by the ticks putting bacteria in the blood or the dogs destroying their own blood cells with their own immune system. So again, just try to get a feeling for what different dog's gums look like so you'll know when your pet's gums are looking pale. And up here, her red blood cells are only 1.48 and they should be 5.5. Her hematocrit, which is the percentage of red blood cells, is only 9.4 and it should be 37. That blue line, all low, means that she's desperately in need of blood and that's why we're giving her the blood. So let's pretend that these little rocks down here in this, petri in this beaker are red blood cells. You can see they're kind of shaped like a red blood cell, but they're not the right color. And that the, the fluid up top is your blood, your serum in your blood. So let's just pretend that we let this settle and the red blood cells sink to the bottom. Well, about 30% of the normal blood, if you just let your blood cells settle down to the bottom, are 30% of your blood and your serum are your blood cells. So, if for right hand corner, if the blood goes down to a certain level, the first one on the left, that's a normal level, and the one in the middle, the tube in the middle with the low amount of blood, would be an animal that's anemic. And then the other one, the one on the far right, would be actually an animal that's dehydrated and has less serum and more red blood cells. So what happens is our patient is the one in the middle that doesn't have enough red blood cells and the blood count is only 9% instead of 37%. So if you looked at it on a hematocrit tube, after we spin that down, then if this is where the serum is and that's the bottom of the tube, then that's the level of the blood cells. So that's all filled with blood and serum. And when you spin it down, the blood cells sink down, just like the rocks sink down, or the blood cells sink down in this. And so it would be the same type of percentage where this is 30% of the total volume of the serum and the red blood cells. We're calling those red blood cells now. So when we, when we, uh, dog gives blood, we have to give him some sedation. And he's on the table 
And then we have our blood collection set, just like you get when you're going in the hospital, and we palpate the vein, and then we have to put a needle right into the vein. And then the blood goes down, and, and it, because that's in a vacuum, it, it will start to flow in and collect, and we fill up that bag with blood. We give that blood to dogs that need blood, and this is my nephew's dog. His name is Luke. So as the, the blood nears the top, you can see it streaming in here, and it's slowly filling up. This is the most, this is the hardest part of the whole procedure is waiting for this to come into the bag and, and holding the vein off and letting it come in the needle. And Luke's tranquilized because um, if he's not, they will move and then the blood collection is all for naught. So he's not, he's not doing anything but just laying there quietly. You can go back in, Molly. Good girl. Okay, you stay there and get your blood transfusion, okay? You're a good girl. We're going to help you live. Oh, okay, Ron, I'll get in. Picture of her blood cells and they're all clumped together. Those are platelets, but her blood cells are all clumped together, not spaced out like the ones up above. And that's the problem. There's our blood donor. Luke! Luke! Look at me, buddy. Yeah, what you doing, Lukey? Hi, Luke. Oh, poor Luke. You're so tired. Thanks for giving the blood today. You're yeah, he's just wagging real slow. He's having a heck of a day, huh, Luke? Thanks for giving the blood. Luke is actually my Luke is actually my nephew's dog, and this is my house, and this is his sister Leia, and all my dogs are looking at Luke like, "What's wrong with you?" And usually he's just as active as Leia, so they all have to go up and smell Luke and see what's going on. Your dog will be, if you ever have your dog tranquilized, of course, this is going to take a while for them to come out of it. But keep them away for, from, so they don't get in trouble, don't get attacked by another dog, don't fall down stairs, don't, get, uh, don't lay in the hot sun where they may uh, get overheated and have problems. And then you're going to see my pool in a minute. Uh, keep them away from the pool because they might, Luke might not be able to swim too good if he gets in the pool. Of course, my dogs are all wonder and they know the smell of the veterinary hospital, so they know what happens when you go there. So Luke's going to stare at his ball and he's going to pick it up because he's still obsessed with the ball and he wants to pick it up and he's going to go lay right in the corner with it and uh, just look at it instead of retrieving it like he usually does. So that's Luke was so nice to give the blood to our patient, which had low blood count because I think what happened when it all was said and done, uh, she, had a, she had a really severe anemia, but her blood clotted, so I knew it wasn't a poisoning. And I think it might be a tick bacteria that is uh, causing her blood cells to blow up because they're, uh, the, the bacteria grow inside the blood cell and cause them to blow up and cause the anemia, or it's immune cells. But I did all the tests and didn't show a bacterial infection or a tick infection, but, so I used, but I still used antibiotics anyway and steroids in case it's an immune problem. And vets always have to, sometimes have to do that. Sometimes we don't know exactly what it is. And we might have to use a couple drugs to make sure. Anyway, well, I hope you, um, enjoyed the video a little bit more educational than surgery but I wanted to show you what happens when we give a dog a blood transfusion and why some dogs might be anemic and how we test for that and anyway have a nice summer and a good day and I haven't had a couple I haven't had videos for a few weeks because I've been away but hopefully I'll have a few in the next week so to make up for lost time so have a great time and remember I keep selling more books uh, on dog dish diet, uh, especially labs with ear infections. A lot of labs are getting cleared up just by eating better food when they have chronic infected ears and also seizures. I'm amazed that dogs that are eating a healthy diet, no more commercial treats and better commercial foods or home cooked foods or raw foods, 
uh, they get over a lot of medical problems. So check out dogdishdiet.com. Uh, the book's available on a Kindle now. You guys have a great day.